Uh, certainly, uh, there are lots of parallels. Um, uh, to doing it in bits and pieces. I had a, um, I, in the Wunderkammer piece, I had a, a tile game that we adapted so students could put different images into it and see if combinations uh, emerged that, that they hadn't thought of before. And it, it's uh, things like that. Uh, but I, I, I don't know whether it's, it's something that is... Uh, um, that it's transportable right now, whether whether it scales in a way that it could be used um, out, outside of my own somewhat um, odd classes. <laughs> I love that tile game. I thought that was really cool part of the of the piece. Mm -hmm. I played around with it a little bit. Yeah, and so if you can just kind of you can put your own images in there and kind of come up with your own check sure. positions. That's very cool. So still in Flash, or are you using other tools now, or? Um, that was in Flash, um, and what what I've what I've been playing around with most recently is JavaScript, um, but I'm I'm not exactly happy with it yet. So again, I'm playing around with with the tools I'm trying to make uh, with what I'm trying to make, and then the tools I'm trying to use to make. Them. So. <laughs> well, that's what I love about little digital pieces, you can come to them, you yeah. can move far enough along that you know what the next step is and, and, uh, and come back to it right, instead right. of juggling lots of things right, at a time. Right. Are there other questions that you talked about with, um, with Keith? Keith that maybe we could follow up on that would be, you know, where if you're looking for continuities and so on? Um, we'd, uh, we'd, we talked about the um, historicity of the of his piece and, and how it was so much a snapshot of the time uh, with its huge instructions on how to navigate the site so on the, that we don't need to do anymore or, or we might need to do you know we might have viewers who who would need that kind of thing but we don't do it anymore um, which I think you know the, the fact that we feel we don't need to provide um, directions on how to work it is part of the exploration experience piece uh, that that I think is pretty critical to to discovering something new um, so um, so so in in that sense not providing instructions can be frustrating for someone who doesn't know how to use something but can be ultimately hugely beneficial um, because if we were worried about how to allow uh, readers to or viewers to experience the text in a um, multi-navigational way. I, I think that's the only the only thing we can do. There have to be places where people are confused or aren't quite sure where they've where they are or where they've come from. Yeah, no, that, that makes sense. Um, I mean, I think the idea is you, to find a, a, a happy medium, you know, where you're generating a little bit of curiosity or, yeah, generating a little curiosity on the part of the readers and allowing them to, to navigate the text uh, or, or, or kind of asking them to make choices as they navigate the text and at the same time making it, you know, not so frustrating. And I think it's interesting because that's probably, that changes over the years as we just, like you were saying, we expect a greater... Uh, facility with these kinds of things from our from our readers, right? And people are being very brave in the kinds of things they're. Uh, recently, um, there was an article called "Satellite Lamps in Kairos," um, and the the experiments that they were doing with with GPS and and the rhetorical and um, functional and other kinds of conclusions that they came to came to that could be applied to many different things are, are just fascinating but who would have thought of that kind of thing as being um, a, a, a work of scholarship yeah. five years ago ten years ago okay. so there's wonderful things to yeah. come yeah I agree 
And, you know, one thing that's kind of interesting, I think a lot of times it seems like video is, is a big thing now, you know, asking students to make videos and scholarly videos and so on. And I think there's a, I mean, I like video as much as the next person, but there's a kind of loss of what of what your web text and other ones create, which is more of an experience where the, you know, the user's involved in making choices and navigating and, and, um, and getting a little bit confused. Well, some kind of interactive video might be kind of interesting. I don't know what that would be, but yeah, where you could stop it and start it and, you know, I mean, obviously you can stop it and start it, but do things other than that, you know, be kind of interesting. Right. Yeah, that's true. I'd also like to see um, kind of open um, texts, whether they're web texts or whatever, that allow people to to contribute and and some t maybe even more than just commentary, uh, and uh, you can you can do that. You can have people comment on it. But it was a text that was built while people were commenting on it. Um, the authors reacted to those things, and and our author reacted and included that in the in the work. That would be fun for Kairos to set up. It would be fun, and I, I think the challenge is just you know these are still pieces of scholarship and they have to be closed at a certain point, you know, so it's, it, I think that's probably a challenge for the editors to figure out how to make that, how to make something like that work. It could be something that was open for 30 days. Yeah, yeah, so exactly. Just exactly. to, just to get the feel of that kind of collaborative, um, collaborative sense of building something together. Yeah. Well, it's kind of interesting thinking about the best web text too. Like, how many of them have been individually authored, and how many collaboratively authored? Uh, collaboration has always been central to, to our work, but you're you're right that there are more probably that are group authored proportionally than yeah. one might find in other places. I, I'm sure there are more Kairos web texts generally that are group authored, but I wonder if there are more Kairos best web texts. I'm just looking at the list right now, and it looks like in the beginning there were, well, they were mostly single authored, and then starting pretty recently, 2000, yeah. So I mean, it's, a, it's a mix, but interesting. <laughs> because to do the kind of thing that you did, I mean, you know, you could easily have three or four or five people working on that piece. Again, one of these kind of big web texts that, that covers a lot of ground and does a lot with different tools, you can see why it would be advantageous to have a lot of people working on it. Right. I think one of the, one of the things that gets in the way of people working with web texts uh, or visual projects is their sense that they, they don't, or, or the actual fact that they don't know how to do the design. You know, they, they may have a, a, an excellent idea of what it is that they want, but they can't execute it. And there are also people who um, can, can execute, uh, but not well. So, so the, the, the piece uh, uh, it feels, feels more amateur because it's, it's the best that uh, the, the authors can do. And I'm a, I'm a big proponent of those kinds of collaborations where the person who um, works with the design alongside the author um, is, is a co-author. Uh, I, I think that that's, that's important. Um, although it depends on the amount to which, to, to which that happens. Um, and it has to happen, of course, together. I don't think that anybody could create a, the, the content of a web text and then hand it off to someone to, to design it. Uh, the, way, the way what I did, um, because I could do both parts, you know, they, they were intertwined in a way that, that they, where they couldn't be called, pulled apart. The design couldn't be pulled apart from, uh, from what it was that the, was being communicated by the design and by the words. So uh, I, I'm, I'm interested in more, more collaborative work like that uh, happening for uh, so that we don't have to have all the expertise in one person. Uh, I don't know why people worry about that kind of collaboration is somehow not the same as the collaborations uh, that we do otherwise because it's always bringing people with different 
um, skill sets to a project. Right, and that, but there has to be a deep understanding that the design is is meaningful and that right. that it's part of the content of the piece and not just something added on after the fact. Excellent. Well, great, Susie. <laughs> okay, hang on. Let me turn off the um, let me turn off the recording. Oops. <laughs>